Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good morning. Uh, first off, let me say thank you. Thank you to all of you who were able to uh, watch uh, the segment on yesterday, October the 11th, um, featuring me um, bringing awareness to domestic violence with the Honorable Pastor Dr. Kimberly Green um, on her show, The Prayer Clinic, that aired on Preach the Word Network on yesterday. Some of you watched uh, with me while I went live on Facebook. Some of you were in your homes watching your TVs, laptops, whatever. Um, thank you, thank you, it was amazing. Um, I just thank God for the platform and using me um, in this season to bring awareness to such a devastating thing called domestic violence. Um, for those of you who were not able to watch it um, with us yesterday as it aired, um, here is a, a, a copy of it um, that you all will be able to see. So take a look. Um, I think your, your girl did okay, I think. Um, but I just thank God for the platform, and I thank God for you all for your prayers and your encouragement. Um, there's more to come from Warrior She um, Ministry. Um, so y'all hang out with us. You know, I'm enjoying this ride, whatever God is doing in this season. I'm just enjoying hanging with you guys. Um, I, I have fun every Tuesday night and whatever God allows me to go live and whatever he allows me to do. Um, I'm, just, I'm just enjoying you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate all of you. Um, so here it is, take a listen. And welcome to the Prayer Clinic TV show. Today in the Prayer Clinic, we will be talking and discussing domestic violence. Through this pandemic, we have came to learn that domestic violence is on the rise. But I want to share with every viewer and listener out there today that you do not have to remain in a situation where you feel like you're being threatened or harm. God gives us a way out. He is hearing the cries of his people and he is sending help on today. In the prayer clinic, we have no other than the warrior she herself. We have Miss Rebecca Lynch out of the DMV area right here in the state of South Carolina to share her testimony and how she has overcame domestic violence herself. She is a trailblazer for anyone who is out there who is experienced that they feel like they're in a relationship that is bringing harm or threat to themselves or either to the simple fact that you feel like you're fearing for your life. There is help and we're going to bring you that help today. And that help is even the more to know that God is hearing your prayers and your cries. Miss Lynch, how are you on today? I am wonderful. I'm welcome, excited welcome, here. welcome to the Prayer TV show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm yes. excited to be here. Great, great. You know, I I, I followed you and, and I well met you a little over a year ago. Right. And um, I was at one of the programs that you were sponsoring in um, in an event to raise money for domestic violence. Right. And I can remember being in there with all the songs and everything that was being shared and you giving your testimony. And so I was like, wow. And so when we began to start this TV show, I said that would be absolutely great to have her on to be able to share with everybody, not only how you overcame, but God gave you enough strength that you're now helping others. And so I want you to share with everyone about Warrior She. Warrior She, uh, first let me say thank you for having me. Yes. I, it's an honor to be here. Great. Warrior She is something that um, God placed on my heart probably about four years ago when he gave that name to me. I'm like, God, I don't even know if people are gonna understand what that is. Mm -hmm. um, but what I um, am doing in it, what God has ever allowed me to do, like you said, 
I have been doing gospel service, promoting gospel service for 10 years now. Um, just on last year, um, God placed it on my heart, probably about two years prior to that, to dedicate one of those services to bring an awareness to domestic violence. And I did not want to do it for several reasons because um, over the years of my uh, speaking out on domestic violence, I have found that sometimes people don't want to listen about it. They don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like put it off for a few years and then finally I decided, okay, God, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to have this service and I'm going to uh, dedicate it to bringing awareness to domestic violence. That was the service that I did last year, July the 20th, that you were a part of. Um, and God moved, God allowed, um, there were several women in the audience at that service yes. that were domestic violence about yes. that I had no idea were and then I found out you exactly. were also a, a domestic violence survivor yes. in that same service. Um, so I decided last year that going forward that every service that I do I'm going to dedicate it to bringing awareness to domestic violence. Um, what you know and then some people you know may think that you know domestic violence again you said you know something they don't want to hear about some people don't want to hear about it and that's I believe that one of the reason is because they don't know how to step out right. um, when we have been in a relationship or we're experiencing domestic violence we have now um, have ourselves in a place of what I call entrapment right and so what entrapment does it has several different characteristics one thing about entrapment, it makes us feel like we are, um, like we're, we're powerless. And another thing about entrapment, it begins to play emotional tricks on us. Like we just, you know, it, it is there to wear you out, to make you feel like you're weak, Absolutely. like you're powerless, like there's no help, that you can't do anything. And so those are tricks, I believe, of the enemy. That's right. Those are lies that have been told that you're not good enough, you're, you're not worthy enough. And, and I believe, too, that those things hold us into a place of confinement. We find ourselves staying in situation and relationships right. rather than finding a way out. But God has a way out. Absolutely. First Corinthians 10 and 13, he mm. promised us that he will not allow a temptation to be upon us that we, that we cannot bear or there's not a way of escape. There's not a way out. And I want to share with everybody that's listening on today as a survivor myself, there is a way out. Absolutely. And I know what it means to feel like when you're in something and you've lost all of your self-esteem, you feel like you're just tired. But those are things that is happening then, but they're not a place or a feeling that you should feel forever. And you should, you know, regardless what you've been told, find a way out. Oh, absolutely. So how did you find your way out? My way out came through my parents. Oh, wow. Um, I was in it for a year and a half before my mom ever found out, before my parents found out. Um, through that journey, I, I decided I wasn't going to leave. That was my house. Um, but when I got to the end and was tired, I started in my mind planning, planning, planning his demise. That was going to be my out. His in my demise? Mind. In yes. your mind? In my wow, mind. So you were actually, my God, you know, yes. we got something in common and similar because, you know, sometimes you get to that, point, that point and you, you said something that a lot of us can relate to mm -hmm. who have been there. You said that you felt like it was your house and you weren't going to leave. Right. We can sometimes want to hold on to materialistic mm -hmm. things, but that should never supersede never. our peace right. nor our safety. Absolutely. But you allowed it to supersede and you decided you were going to stay in it. Yes. What made you leave? That day, that day that I left, I actually, after many weeks of planning in my head that I'm going to I'm going to take him out. That day when he came in wanting to argue and fight, I actually picked up a knife to take him out. And he called my parents. And my parents came around. They were, they were only about three minutes away from where I lived. 
and it got to my house and my father said he saw something in my eyes that he had yeah. never seen before. And he said he knew that was the time to leave because he said, I knew if you had stayed, either he was gonna kill you or you were gonna kill him. And that's the day I left. You know, it, it, it's, it's you, you said it and, and I wanna say this to everybody that's listening those words not only only or thoughts just don't happen they don't. in your mind. It happens in a lot of us mind because when we feel like we can't fight back, when we feel like we're losing everything that we have, we try to find revenge rather than finding out. Exactly. And we become succumb to the fact that we're still staying in the situation. And a lot of times it feels like we don't have nowhere else to go. We don't want to go crying back home to mama, to sister or brother or, or whoever. But I want to share with you that we got to find somebody that we got to share this with yes. that we can find help in getting out. My surprise in your testimony is that he called your parents. And, and, and you know, to me, that's, that's, that's like a bold demon. Mm -hmm. You create the problem. Mm -hmm. You manifest the problem. You did the damage. Yeah. But then you turned around when time for damage to be done to you, and you punk out and you want to call your mom. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What did your daddy say? Because daddy says something else about girls. My dad was a, a kind of a, a mild-mannered man. Um, when they got there, my mom was the one that went to war. My mom was my advocate. That's that warrior she. Found, she. Yes. <laughs> when she found out what I was going through, my mother was my advocate um, until I left. My dad was kind of laid back, mild minded, trying to talk down the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, he bugged at my parents as well. But when he called them, he didn't call them for me to leave. Oh, he did not? No. He called them. For them to talk to me and let them know that she's in here and she has a nice knife and says she's going to kill me. He didn't call them to come get me to leave. Wow. No, that wasn't the purpose. But when they saw the, when when they saw, saw the escalation yes, of the situation, and the look in your time, eyes, that's it. he knew it was time to go. Because you had gotten to, you, you have reached your breaking point. I was there. I and, had, I and, there. And, and, and this is so important to where I think that God really stepped in and had them to get there in time enough because of the simple fact that you would have gotten that breaking point that day. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for them intervening, because you know, it, you know, parents know their children. Yes. And he knew that even though they didn't know until that particular day, he saw something in you to let, to let him know this has been going on for a while. Yeah. Wow. Well, what made you stay as long as you, well, you know you didn't want to leave the home do you have children? I had two daughters at the time by him. The, and that when, the, when the verbal abuse started, I was like thrown off a little. When the physical abuse started, I was in shock. I was embarrassed. I was lost because I had never seen it. I would never witnessed it. Mm -hmm. um, so for maybe a year or so, I literally could not fight back verbally or physically. It's like I was in a daze. For a long time, were you? Did, do you think you felt numb to to the to the um, to the verbal abuse? That by the time the physical came, that you you didn't know what to do. You know, maybe that is what it, what it was. Now that you say that, maybe that's what it was because I had endured the verbal abuse for about a year. Yeah, because sometimes when we can continue to hear things verbally, at, at some point, how how the brain works is that. The brain is, is, is muscle, yes. and the brain begins to um, speak to the body to respond to the environment that it's in. And so when we find ourselves in an environment of violence, it begins to automatically respond. And sometimes it could just be saying, oh, it's okay, it's okay, he's not touching me, he's not hitting me, so it's okay. But we should never be okay. Never. It should never be okay. And I, I believe, listen, I believe in, in the love chapter mm. in Corinthians 13. I believe in the love chapter where the greatest of all things is, is the gift of love. 
And I feel that love should be to the point that it should never hurt us to where we got to feel like we're weaking, we're not strong. Love makes us strong. Yes, if does. love is strong enough to cover a multitude mm. of sins, if love can can be so uh, so powerful that it made Jesus to stay Come on the on. cross, yes. if love can be so powerful that we can experience it and, and look at the enemy when they do us harm and still love people, I believe that the power of love should not ever be felt or to be um, what we want to call abused, right. that we can turn around and, and flip the strip and begin to, you know, create damage and chaos and verbally, you know, speak to people out of a tone of our mouth because that destroys and first, those verbal begin to destroy and break us down right. so that when the physical comes, we already feeling like we're worthless, like we're just torn apart and we're weak. But that's far from the truth. Absolutely. If we can just embrace the love to know that we were created in love, regardless where we came from or how or who our parents are really, God said he formed us in, a form, in, in, in our mother's womb. We were formed in the darkest of, of those things. So if we're formed in, in our mother's womb out of the love of God that he has for us, that there's a purpose in us, yes. we sometimes got to just fall back yes. and surrender to that initial love that Jesus gave us to help us get out. I remember when I had my experience mm -hmm. and when I went, listen, it, it happened to me. And in the 10th year, I was, God was calling me into the ministry. And so that was 14 years ago. And it was in my, it was in that year, 10 years after I've gotten out of the situation. Um, that's when the Lord spoke to me and he said, you need to forgive. Yes. And I said, God, I thought that I did. He said, no. He said, because you remind, mm -hmm. you're reminding of, of what, had what had happened. And so when God brought that revelation and spoke that day to me, spoke that to me, I immediately said, Lord, I forgive. Mm. And when I forgive, I want to share something with you. It was no longer a conversation. It was no longer a remembrance. It was like I was totally free. Some of the things that I, you know, I don't even remember now. That it, it's just left, it left an area of darkness or area of void in my memory yes. that I, I don't even I don't I can't relate to it. I don't even try. That's Why right. dig up something God done delivered you from? That's right. Why go back when you said to the Lord that hey I have forgiven or God has asked you to forgive? It's not for the other person, but it's where He's going to take you. That's right. So in order for me to have become a minister, a pastor, a leader, a counselor myself, I you know I had to go through my own steps of healing my own steps of overcoming my own steps of being delivered that I live up to what I was actually beginning to preach and speak about and Absolutely. forgiving doesn't necessarily means that you are acknowledging or accepting what happened it is an area of forgiveness that you can grow That's right. and that you can move on and that you can get the better that God it has for you Absolutely. and so one thing I, I love about it is this. Let's learn what God is teaching us right at that moment. Yes, right. So we can move on. So years later, we can sit down and interview and have a conversation about it and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I survived. I love it. I won't put up with it again. Absolutely. I absolutely will not. Will not. And so, you know, it made me stronger. Made and me so who I, I am. It made you who you are. It made me who I am. So, I so the two children... They have grown up to be adults now. Yes. Have any of them experienced domestic violence? Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yes. yes. Wow. How did you, as a mother, handle that? It was heartbreaking for me to, because my, I never wanted any of my girls to witness, to, to even endure half of what I've been through. And when I found out that, um, actually I had two daughters. Mm -hmm that had it do it some level of it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was heartbreaking. I can for imagine. Me. I, um, of course, I intervened and I, um, they knew about my journey. 
by this time, God had already had me out there putting it out and revealing some things. Um, so I just went to them and listen, love doesn't hurt. It if does this, not. This is what you have to do. Um, it's, you have to leave. You have to let it go. You have to let No matter how much you feel like you're attached to it. And there are times that it, it, it can be um, save it or salve it in a way, but the two parties themselves have to come into agreement and seek help that Absolutely. it must get stopped. It can't be one person by themselves because you're not in a relationship by yourself. You can't, you know, you can't do 50% or or 80% or you doing the 100% and they doing 20. Absolutely. It's not, it's, it's still yet not going to work. And the reason I ask you that question is because I want the viewers to know that domestic violence sometimes is a stigma of generation yes. uh, that, that comes down from generation. We saw mama, we saw grandma dealt with it and and you know they they didn't address it and it felt like you know they didn't supposed to speak or the man or the authority in the home yes that is so true Absolutely. but authority is being abused when you you and you you know you're neglecting to take care of what God has given you or gifted you with and it should not be that's not a part of loving somebody that's, right. that's not a part of of, of of training and wanting somebody to to submit that's more part of a control thing and that control thing can lead you to be damaging when, when it's not in the midst of obeying and, and, and you know the Bible says that you know husbands are to love their wives as just as much as he loves the church Absolutely. and so that love and I just don't want to say that to throw it out there uh, because men too experience domestic yes, violence do. I've seen men that have um, experienced I've had wives to have come through my group girlfriends to come through my group yes. where the man was actually being abused himself whether it was verbally or okay. physically those things no matter in itself they are still yet abused and so I say to everybody that is listening whether you are male or female it is not to be tolerated Absolutely. it is to be dealt with do not ignore it seek you some help if you need to get help but most of all know that you should love that Self, yes, love thyself enough to know that you build a level of standard that you will not tolerate it because that is not how the Father loves us. Mm. God don't love us that way. Yes, He chastised those that He loved, but He don't abuse them. And so we got to keep in mind and in perspective how we want. God to orchestrate in our lives and how we got to be obedient to the word of God Absolutely. and get you some help. Yes. yes, get some help. And so how can people reach and contact you to find some help and to be able to, um, you know, look up for where is Warrior She? How can we find Warrior She? And you never really explained to us about the Warrior She, but I got it. You know, that warrior means that you're going to stand up yes. and you're going to be that she, yes. that person that takes the rightful place and, See, you, and, and you know, not be disrespected. And the thing about that is God respects us. Absolutely. And we have to declare and demand respect because he's a God that respects his children. Absolutely. He does. And he does it so lovingly. Don't we? Yes. So how can you, you know, contact, how can we actually, you know, get it Um I am on Facebook, uh, Warrior, she, Warrior She Room um, is, a, is my page on Facebook. Um, I can also reach via email. Yes. I'm going to get that out. Mm -hmm. um, my email address is allglory24 at gmail.com. Um, I have a YouTube page that's under construction right now, so hopefully within a week. We're going to have that totally up and running, and that is also called the Warrior She Room. I am so excited, and the reason why um, about the Warrior She Room is because, um, he, you know, Minister Lynch has been traveling up and down the East Coast, talking about her ministry, the Warrior She Ministry. She travels from the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area, South Carolina, um, and so I told her, I said, you got one state in between that we got to find somebody to advocate for you and that you can take control of this East Coast of the United States and share your awareness 
for the domestic violence. I don't see a sense in you traveling and going through those states and getting and coming back to South Carolina and then going back and missing those states. So we want to uh, to encourage anybody that is something that you're interested in doing. Come, please contact um, Minister Lynch and let her get in touch with you. We just thank God that there is awareness. There is a way out. And I want to share with everybody listening on today. You are worthy. Mm. You are more valuable than you ever can imagine. More than any materialistic thing that you own. What we own do not define our value of who we are. God defines us. And he thought that you were worthy enough that he made you. He created you. And so we got to learn to value ourselves and to know that we are worthy. You are somebody. You are somebody. You belong to the kingdom of God. Your father owns everything. And so you got to realize that you are part of this royal priesthood. Yes. You are a part of this holy nation. You are a part of the kingdom of God. You are a chosen vessel. You are equipped and empowered with something on the inside of you that says, greater is he that is in you that is Ooh. in this world. You can defeat the powerless proud of the enemy that attacks you from every area. The enemy seeks whom he can devour. And sometimes he seeks those that are closest to us that brings harm and bring abuse unto us. But I want you to know today, and I want you to realize that you are a child of the almighty God. You're a child of the king. You are strong. You're an overcomer. You are victorious. You are above. You are all that God has called you to be. It is not what I am saying. It is not about what the person next to you is saying. And if somebody is in your ear telling you to stay in there and stick it out, if you're wanting to stay because you feel like it is your home it is your place of glory I want to tell you the minute that you step out walk by faith and not by sight God will restore you and return double for your trouble get out while you have a chance call somebody let somebody know that you need some help and if you can't find anybody to call then you are more than welcome to tune into her page, tune into my page. I am on Facebook. I am at Kimberly Green International Ministries. You can find me at the Prayer Clinic TV show. You can YouTube me. All you got to do is Google my name. I am Dr. Kimberly Green, and I too will find you and find some help for you. So we thank each and every one of you, and we just want to just let everybody know that God is a God that seeks to and fro. It may seem to be a secret to you, but it's not a secret to God. And nothing is too hard for our God. Can you please share with the audience and just give the last closing statements about you know, domestic violence and just give them a bit of awareness of what you would want and encourage and like to see them do? I just and any upcoming events that um, you may have. I just, I just want to say that um, I made it. You can make it. If you if there's somebody that you can't reach out in your circle, you can't reach one of one of us um, via Facebook. There is the domestic violence hotline. Yes. National domestic violence hotline. Tell somebody Tell what somebody. you're going through. You Tell can, somebody. This does not have to end your journey. Mm -hmm. um, and next month for the bringing awareness to domestic violence, we are, I am going to sponsor um, a child that has lost his mother just last year to domestic violence and we're gonna sponsor him with some school supplies, yes, um, clothing, shoes, um, whatever he may need it, because he's now a freshman in high school. Amen. Um, so we're gonna sponsor him next month um, to bring awareness for domestic hotline and I'm also continuing to do interviews on yes. um, the Warrior Sheep page um, on Facebook. Um, so join us on that. But you can make it. You can yes, you can make it. You can make it. And I thank God, you know, for how you care for the youth and the young who's lost that, especially you said the one that is in high school, his most exciting years. Yes. Um, and I can't imagine what it would feel like not to have a parent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes we, 
we, we think about how devastating it is to having to lose to an illness or an infirmity, but when it comes to something as foolish as this, something that we can correct and make a better decision on, I think that we too need to continue to make that decision. Thank you.